thank you very much for the introduction and thank you everyone for coming today to my talk. And let me take this opportunity to thank RCC, staff, interns, Carson Fellows, everyone for making the time of being here so creative and so productive. Um, the project that I'm working now, it's book writing about protected areas of Albania, where I am, besides uh, writing about the values of geodiversity and biodiversity of protected areas, I am studying and writing about the tourism in protected areas and the challenges of management of protected areas in a new reality, political, social, economical reality of Albania. Today I'm going to talk uh, about tourism development in Albania's protected areas. Well, first of all, I'm going to give an historical overview how this small country, unknown Albania, came into the attention of European travelers. Who were the first travelers? Where did they go? What did they write? Then I'm going to present the protected areas of Albania in categories and I will continue with tourism frequentation and tourism types and then I will talk by giving some case studies, I'll give uh, some good positive examples of tourism impact on the rural development and I will conclude my talk uh, with threats and challenges of protected areas in the current reality. A land within sight of Italy and less known than the interior of America. That's how the English historian Edward Gibbon characterized Albania in his 18th century book, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Due to its complicated history, with many invasions following each other constantly, Roman, Byzantine, Slavic and Ottoman, the geographical and cultural entity of Albania as a nation has been enigmatic and often misunderstood. As a writer and specialist in Albanian studies, Robert Elsie states at his book, Early Albania. Bringing the Balkans to the attention of Europe in the 19th and 20th century, in a way, came by traveling. The romantic movement in literature and philhellenism of that time motivated many people to go to the Orient with the hope of finding psychological and cultural recovery. The usual destination was Greece, as a special attraction known for its ancient culture. And while it was visited before by European travelers, diplomats or cultural tourists, its neighbor Albania was almost unknown. Cultural traveling of that time not only served as aesthetic pleasure of discovering a new ethnographic culture, but through the writings of these travelers, Europe recognized and perceived the Balkans and its people. The first visitors of the remote landscapes of Albania, most of which are currently protected areas, are the travelers of 19th and 20th century. Driven by a trend to discover countries which had ancient history as Greece or not recognized at all as Albania, they traveled to those countries to get in contact with Balkan culture. Their visits were taken for different reasons, either political, historical, military, geographical, literary, or just for curiosity and pleasure. Some of them, such as Pugville, Leek, Byron, Hophaus, Lear, Nopcha, Durham, etc., were not mere travelers. They were diplomats, writers, scholars, artists, and persons of high knowledge and influence. Like former travelers or chroniclers in the earlier centuries who visited Balkans and left detailed descriptions of the places and events that they witnessed, the travelers of 19th and 20th century did the same. In the notes, in their notes is evident the high interest about the landscapes and the relations between nature, character, and the physical appearance of the population. They give descriptions of the coast of Albania in the south, the mountains and valleys on the north, settlements and culture all over the country. They create a picture of the society of that time and write about history, culture, and traditions. From the notes of many visitors that came later to Albania, we understand that the journey publication of those travelers awoke interest to the readers to see almost the same landscapes that they described. The most famous traveler who turned world's eyes toward Albania was Lord Byron. 
who visited the Albanian territories ruled by Ali Pash Tepelena in 1809 after considerable information obtained from the book of Edward Gibbon. Seeking adventure and the undiscovered, Byron found a great deal of inspiration in Albania. He left detailed descriptions of landscapes, folk costumes, and traditions. Commenting on the typical outfit of Albania, he says the, that it's the most magnificent outfit in the world. And here in this picture, he's wearing a South outfit of Albania, and this is a painting from Thomas Phillips. Byron's interests, as he was one of the most important people of the time, urged the curiosity of many other people, and on the 19th century, the number of visitors who traveled to Albania is numerous. Douglas, Turner, Holland, Tignor, Hooks, Cockrell, etc., some of the travelers who visited Balkans in early 19th century and left behind written documents. Edward Lear, <coughs> the British painter and poet, in his diary, Journal of a Landscape Painter in Albania, depicted the country's wonderful panoramas during his visit in 1848. He loved the magnificent landscape, flora and fauna, and was preoccupied with what he saw, with natural scenery, with costumes, and with buildings as part of the scenery. Captain Best, at his book, Excursions in Albania, gives a description of the wild boar, deer, and woodcock shooting in that country, as he states on the cover of the book. Han, at his book, Journey, Exploration of the Drin and Vardar, uh, describes the landscapes, mountains, lakes, and rivers. He is impressed by the rich vegetation and is marveled by the forest that enchant him. In early 20th century, Ipen, De Grand, Steinmetz, Nopcha, Edi Durham, Yiricek, Gordon, etc., were the travelers who set foot on Albania and published great books about the landscape, settlement, culture, and traditions. Edi Durham, the British artist and historian that visited Thethi in 1908, besides description of landscapes of Shala Valley, Thethi Valley, accursed mountains, etc., studied the culture of High Albania and wrote. Life at Thethi was of absorbing interest. I forgot all about the rest of the world. And there seemed no reason why I should ever return. I stayed some time and came back to it and hope to go again. After them, fewer and fewer travelers visited Albania and fewer publications came out, which were mainly focused on the historical events of that time. The installation of the communist and later socialist system brought gradually complete isolation of the country for half a century and a period of total darkness in many aspects. Landscape diversity and rich biodiversity brought the need for protection and designation of 799 sites as protected areas in 1996, with amended laws in 2002, 2008, 2010, most of which are small nature monuments. The current country's area under protection is 16%, which is a relatively good percentage. Divided in six categories of IUCN that you see here, Albania has two strict protected areas, uh, River Gashi on the north and Kardici Forest on the south, where uh, they are protected mainly for scientific reasons and where no touristic uh, activities are allowed. Besides, Albania has also uh, besides six categories of IUCN, Albania has uh, Ramsar sites, four Ramsar sites, which is Caravasta Lagoon, Prespa Lakes, Shkodra Lake, and Butrinti Lagoon. Has one biosphere reserve, which is a transboundary area, uh, Ohrid and Prespa Lakes, that we share with Macedonia and Greece. Also has one marine protected area of Karabarun Saza. The biodiversity of Albania is very rich. 36% uh, of the country's territory is covered by forests and 15 by uh, pastures. Albania has uh, all kinds of vegetation, starting from the Mediterranean, Mediterranean bush, oak, uh, beach, and above that, the alpine uh, pastures. Albania is a Mediterranean country, and it's very common to find olives, oranges, and lemons. 
Albania is significant for the rich ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. Uh, for the species diversity, we can say that 3,200 flora species and 756 fauna species are found in Albania, 300 types of medicinal and aromatic plants, and a very high endemism. 1% of the plants of Albania are endemic. The same we can say for the fauna, which is very rich, and in Albania you can find globally threatened spe uh, species, also endemic species. Just in one lake you can find endemic fauna that have 40 species of Molucks that are relic and endemic in Ohrid Lake, and two fish species are endemic. One of them is the one in the picture, which is red-spotted uh, trout. Albania has a long coastline which extends along the Adriatic and the Ionian Sea. On the south, the Albanian Riviera with its lovely beaches, Karabunum Peninsula, Sazan Island, Xamil Islands, and several protected areas, including national parks, nature monuments, and marine protected area, is without doubt the most exciting touristic area of the country. Along the Adriatic coast, the lagoons of Cunevain, Patok, Caravasta, and Narta, with their rich wetland ecosystems, migratory and endangered birds offer opportunities for wildlife tourism. Being a predominant mountainous country, Albania offers fascinating landscapes for nature tourism and outdoor activities. The Albanian Alps in the north, where two national parks are designated, Thethe and Valbona, surprise the visitors with the scenery, landforms, biodiversity and culture of the isolated settlements among the mountains for centuries. Daiti Mountain, Chavstama, Tomori, Korabi, etc., all being part of protected areas, offer great opportunities for outdoor activities all year round. The peaks of the Balkan, belonging to the border region between Albania, Kosovo and Montenegro, is a destination rising in popularity with tourists around the world. Besides natural heritage, cultural heritage of Albania is also rich, considering that the Albanian territory has been inhabited since prehistory. During their long existence, Albanians have created their own culture, which has remained unchanged in some regions, while the influences of the civilizations of neighboring countries and diverse invasions have left their traces too. Albania inherits a great number of monuments of culture, which bear not only the creative talent of Albanians in different periods of history, but also the influence from neighboring countries in the long process of exchange and coexisting existence with them. Uh, in the fourth floor uh, of RCC, uh, you can see in the hallway the posters of the exhibition Nature, Culture and Tourism, uh, where I presented uh, the protected areas of Albania. And with a short video, I will show those uh, posters to all of you, especially to those ones who have not had the chance to see. Uh, they are still there, so you can go and see for more details. Oh. sites and Butrit is one of them. Caves of Albania offer great opportunities for tourism in Albania.
Thank you to Francesco Forino for designing these uh, posters and thank you to Summer for helping me to make this uh, small video. Except some sporadic travelers of the 19th and 20th century, the history of tourism frequentation of Albania is very new, going back to the communist period. During that time, the only Westerners who visited the country were in organized groups coming from neighboring countries, carefully watched by the tour guides, told not to stray uh, from the group, uh, prevented from speaking with Albanians, and even limited what to record with their cameras. This is how Adam Yame describes his visit in 1984 at his book Rediscovering Albania. What they, were, what they visited was what the Albanian government wanted them to see, mainly the most interesting towns like Tirana, the capital, Kruja, the symbol of our national hero, Shkodra, Elbasan, Berat. Parks and thermal waters were not frequented by foreigners, but they were not unknown to the Albanians. During that time, some health centers were created in the form of small villages such as Thethi and Chavstama, ski centers in Shishtavets and Puka, thermal centers of Peshkopia, Elbasan, etc. The first Albanian law protecting the forest and the special trees, animals and birds was that of 1923. In 1940, the first hunting reserve of Kunevain was designated, which can also be considered as the first protected area of Albania. In 1966, some categories of protected areas were designated for the protection of the flora and fauna, and natural reserves were the only protected areas frequented by the licensed hunters. After the political change of the country in 1991, it is not a surprise that Albania was not included in holiday itineraries of the Western travel agencies. The transition time from the centralized economy to the market uh, economy has its political, economical and social bill that kept Albania far from the attention of travelers. It is only these last five years that foreign travelers started to discover the landscapes and culture of Albania and recently several articles showed up in the travel journals or blogs. More and more tourists are visiting the country and much more are expecting to come. The investments in the infrastructure, tourism and the promotion of the heritage of Albania have increased the number of foreign tourists visiting the country in 2017 to more than 5.2 million, which is almost double the population of Albania. Tourism types that are flourishing in Albania, besides sun and sea tourism, include ecotourism, rural tourism, agrotourism, even wine tourism. Outdoor activities and sports such as hiking, mountain biking, park walking, bird watching, paragliding, rafting, diving, are in their initial phase, but very promising. Through some case studies, I'm going to give the positive impact of tourism in protected areas to develop the rural areas where they are situated or they are close by. Tourism can be an integral component of the conservation strategy of protected areas, providing biodiversity and cultural heritage education to visitors, employment for local people and income for the protected areas. The, destination, the designation and promotion of the protected areas stimulated the recognition and fragmentation of the remote and poor areas of Albania, having crucial positive impacts in rural development and forging investment at those rural sites. This is the case of Skrapar, Valbona and Thethi, where two national parks are designated and several nature monuments. Skrapar lies almost totally in the southern mountain, mountainous region of Albania and is well known for its numerous impressive geomorphological features such as canyons, caves, waterfalls. Uh, on the other side, this region is one of the poorest of the country where the population has limited resources to live and the unemployment rate is very high. Although very rich in geomonuments, Skapar was not known of any touristic attraction until the recent years. The promotion of the touristic values of the geosites, the scenery, scenery and water sports have attracted many tourists whose number is continuously increasing. Skrapar, in a way, has initiated geotourism in Albania, mainly for the scenic landscape and outdoor activities such as rafting and hiking. 
Geotourism development in this region is resulting into the creation of the touristic infrastructure, increase of the employment in the tourism sector, increase of the land price, production of local bio products, and reviving all traditions of making some products such as raki, grappa, wine, or rahani, another drink. The same we can say for the faraway villages like Valbona and Fethi, where migration almost left no people in those rural areas. They are among the areas with highest migration level besides some other rural villages of Kuxi and Puka. Being far, provided with poor social and physical infrastructure, almost isolated from the rest of the world, the population of these areas had very limited alternatives and economic and so for economic and social prosperity. But the beautiful landscapes, high mountains, wonderful valleys, torrent rivers, canyons, waterfalls, and their original and intact way of living would attract the interest of the modern travelers who aspire to have unique experiences and immerse with local population. What was their curse became their blessing. Due to untouched landscape and culture, Valbona National Park is increasingly being frequented by visitors. The improvement of the road crossing the park, investments in the traditional restaurants and guest houses, the improvement of the service quality, explain the rapid increase of the number of visitors to this park. Recently, the population, besides farming, stock breeding and beekeeping, is being involved in tourism. Either by cultivating local beer products, making local souvenirs for tourism market, working in tourism uh, service or hosting the tourists at their guest houses. The natural and cultural offer of the National Park of Valbona and National Park of Fethi, they are both situated on the north of Albania and they are very close and they have a lot of similarities. Uh, for ecotourism development is motivating the population to invest in tourism sector, even return from the capital or elsewhere where they migrated. What was considered far wild, unreachable, is getting accessible, admirable, and profitable. That was the positive side of tourism development for rural development. But threats and challenges, uh, for uh, threat, again, the protected areas, so we have to consider those as well. Although protected areas are considered as the cornerstone of nature conservation, in Albania, they are being threatened by logging, wildfires, mass tourism, or the construction of hydropower plants. The initial assessment of protected areas in Albania using the management effectiveness tracking tool undertaken in 2016 came into the conclusion that legal status of protected areas and condition of their values has very good results. While poor results is observed related to the budget availability, security, and management. Wildfires were identified as the most common threat to protected areas. Logging and wood harvesting ranked as the most serious threat that causes degradation of nature values of protected areas. Threats related to the use of biological resources affect the majority of them. Erosion on the seashore or riverbanks and the construction of dams and hydrological modification is among the most prominent threats of protected areas. Deforestation and the decline of biodiversity in protected areas reduce also the attractiveness of the sites for the visitor. Typical, typical example is National Park, this one that you see on the picture of Lura, a wonderful park where glacial lakes, 14 glacial lakes, are hidden in the forest of beech and alpine meadows. The park offers opportunities for the development of ecotourism, hiking, park walking, and bird watching. But the transition period after 1991 was accompanied with social economic problems being the drivers of the forest massacre in this park. Hundreds of stands were cut in the slope facing the Lura village, and this fact and the road leading to the park, which is passable only with high gear, have reduced considerable the interest to visit the park. Economic driven deforestation or even criminal cases of fire burnings or redu are reducing the attractiveness of the landscape in this park, but not only. Although progress is made towards biodiversity conservation through institutional and legislative framework and major laws uh, such as law of uh, protected area, law on biodiversity protection, law on tourism are approved, their implementation and law enforcement 
is the big deal. Another challenge is the mass tourism development in the coastal areas. Sand use removal, forest logging, natural habitat change, beach erosion are some of the problems that the coastal areas are facing. Typical example is the beach of Generali, once a pristine natural beach which was designated a protected area for its scenery and the sea turtle habitat. But tourism development is disturbing breeding sites of the sea turtle and now all you can see are beach chairs and umbrellas but no sea turtle. The fragile marine habitats such as the corals or the artifacts in the bottom of the sea at Karabarun Sazan Marine Protected Area, the picture on the monitor, are exposed to the irresponsible tourists who are not properly guided or even not allowed to. Tourism in protected areas should be an opportunity for conservation education rather than an environmental problem. Keeping that in mind, plans for sustainable tourism management and studies on the destination level criteria and visitor behavior at protected areas to guide tourism is urgently needed. Areas subject to tourist pressures need laws to protect wildlife and sites as well as strictly controls to stop collecting or selling natural items such as corals or stalactites, stalagmites. But another big threat is posing on the protected areas, dams. Albania, a current candidate country to the European Union, is striving to meet the EU standards and recommendations, including the increase of the protected areas percentage and environmental protection. But on the other side, projects for building hydropower plants on the rivers, which are part of the protected areas, financed by European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, World Bank or other banks, contradict the primary goal of protected areas designated for nature conservation. Economic prosperity and nature conservation are clashing and bringing different uses of the resources. Small-scale dams, according to the environmentalists, including myself, are detrimental for rivers and local communities and extremely inefficient. Alterations of the biotic and abiotic conditions of the river habitats, as well as damage of the area surrounding them, with the infrastructure provided, as you see also in the picture, transmission lines, are some of the threats to be considered. These dams are destroying the wild and pristine rivers' ecosystems and threatening their biodiversity. A 2017 Bank Watch study found that eight hydropower projects in Albania, Croatia and Macedonia, financed by European Investment Bank and European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, have damaged the biodiversity and have affected the endemic and endangered species such as Prespa trout. Rivers act as ecological corridors for the dispersal and migration of freshwater species and any barriers to their free movement can have serious consequences for the survival of these species. Not only blocking fish passes, but also releasing insufficient water downstream will hamper local communities' water use who need the water for their fields, sheep, goats and cattle. There are villages in Albania along Valbona National Park and Viosa rivers that rely on these rivers for the water supply. But since many dams are being built or plan to be built, the future of these villages, the traditional land use and stock breeding are at risk. On Valbona River, three dams are being built out of 12 that were planned and 25 are planned to be built on Viosa River. Both these rivers are within the Valbona National Park and Vios Narta protected landscape categories. In this case, the question protected or not protected applies better than anywhere else. But there is a movement going on at this moment in Albania where NGOs, scholars, civil society are getting together and protesting uh, against building these dams on their pristine rivers. And I will continue and end my conclusion, my talk with a short movie, Blue Heart of Europe, which tomorrow is going to be shown in Innsbruck. And with that, I conclude my, my talk, and thank you. Thank you.
you. And welcome to the game.